Coronan Flores, 932. Welcome to the link. Proudly brought to you, and I mean proudly, like proud, proud. East West Rental, Cobble Enterprises, IT&E, Carrier, and Jack in the Box. It's 933. Let's head back into the KUAM News Zoom Room where we have from the FSM Consulate, Teresa Philippin, and from the FSM uh, Association, Nadine Sangani. Good morning, ladies. Morning, Mogasin. Look at these backgrounds, though. Uh, Nadine, let I know you did before we went on. You told us a little bit about the background, but for our audience, what are we looking at in your Zoom background? Oh yes, this is uh, back in Farapayas, where my dad is from in the 1960s. I found a whole treasure treasure trove of, uh, of images from the 60s and 70s. So. I figured the best way to use it were Zoom backgrounds these days. <laughs> you got like a Zoom background gallery? <laughs> I have a gallery, exactly. Is it going to be a slideshow? Like when you're talking, is it going to change every minute? <laughs> I haven't learned how to do that. Uh, oh, fix that, yeah. set that up yet on Zoom. We got to check Jason. Uh, Teresa, what's what's your background? I mean, I know it's not a photograph from the 1960s, but. It's not. Actually, it was a, a photo taken by my daughter when we were still in Yap. Um, she likes to play with the camera. Nice. And, um, she, she took, yeah. So, yeah, I've been going through her, her photos, um, some of her photos recently, and then I, you know, this looked really pretty to me, so. Wow. Yeah, That's I mean, what I have. A, year, yeah. a year into this pandemic, I think that we've gone very, very deep into our Zoom backgrounds, just judging from so, the, the know. kind of guesses. We're becoming creative. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I have a couple in my phone ready to go. Right. right. <laughs> Um, let's just get right into it then. And, uh, I think we're going to start with the repatriation, uh, efforts. So we had a whole bunch of people on a couple weeks ago talking about, uh, this issue of, of people who had traveled out from the FSM or even just been away from the FSM, uh, mm-hmm. before or during the pandemic and then not being able to come back. And so, um, we had heard that there was some discussion from the president about, starting repatriation in May. But we wanted to bring you on, uh, Teresa, to kind of get the official word on what's the status and the conversation with that now. Well, um, Chris, thank you. I think um, think maybe about last month or a little bit before that, um, um, I came on. uh, You guys invited me to come on. And then at that time, I told you that there hasn't been um, any definitive plans as far as uh, repatriation of our um, stranded citizens here on Guam. Um, due to the uh, country's lockdown, but um, there has been some developments um, since then. Uh, and uh, the word, official word, is that on May 13th, yeah. our very first repatriation activity will, will commence, um, starting for the state of Pompeii. Um, the state of Pompeii is the most um, uh, up to, to standard with their, their um, 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 quarantine facility right now. Uh, they've been working really hard over the past year, um, uh, equipping the, the facilities and, and uh, trying to, to get the, uh, the healthcare professionals trained enough to be able to, to handle the, um, this measure. Um, so the FSM government has been working very closely with the U.S. government and uh, uh, the U.S. government will be providing a humanitarian flight at, actually too on May 13th. And the... the um, stranded um, citizens that we are prioritizing to bring in um, to Pompeii on that day would be um, um, some medical patients that they may have been stranded here, their attendants, um, some students that are no longer um, attending uh, or enrolled in, in um, uh, higher ed here on Guam. And uh, we have uh, uh, several um, high level diplomats. Uh, from the U.S. government that we want to bring, that there are going to be on this repatriate, this first repatriation of flight on the 13th. So that's where we're at right now. Um, fortunately, the other three states, um, Yap, uh, Yap, Chuk, and Koshrai, are not quite ready in terms of uh, of uh, being able to to bring back uh, their own stranded residents. How many people are are anticipated to get on that first flight on the 13th? We're looking at about 40 people uh, at this first run. Um, it, uh, you know, it, it's mainly due to um, limited um, capa- uh, quarantine faci- uh, capacity. 
uh, when they when they are uh, getting to Pompeii. And what about the vaccination uh, rate over there in, in Pompeii? The vaccination rate right now, if I'm not mistaken, is about 20 some percent, 26 or, or, or less uh, percent right now uh, across um, the, F, or the four um, FSM states. And for for the forty that are eligible to uh, go back home, go back home, what do they need mm -hmm. to do? Because um, I'm I'm just kind of I pulled up the the press release on the uh, president's uh, website, and I well, think it, it mentions yes. like two negative uh, COVID tests. Is that is that correct? Any other requirements? Right. Um, they're they're going to be uh, we're going to have to to uh, to quarantine them pre departure. Uh, and uh, of course, they, they're going to um, uh, they're required to be um, to have their uh, full uh, vaccination shots and uh, get tested while in quarantine. Uh, you know, the country and uh, the, the country has been really proud, uh, you know, maintaining its COVID free um, status thus far. Uh, so we're taking we're going to be taking every measure possible to ensure that remains, uh, you know, that we mean that the country remains COVID free. So um, I know there's a lot of uh, um, uh, health experts out there that are saying that if you're, you, you're you, uh, even the United States is doing it right now, if you're vaccinated, then you don't need to quarantine upon arrival, right? But um, the FSM, you know, wants to keep it this airtight and, 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 and make sure that everything, um, I mean, that there, there's no possibility of the, the virus getting into the country. So quarantine, pre-departure quarantine, vaccination, uh, uh, COVID testing while in quarantine and that before they can leave. That, that's full, uh, you said full vaccination, right? Meaning two doses. Yeah, yeah. But what, what they is, have one of the issues. Okay, I'm just gonna say, I don't even know if they're offering Johnson & Johnson, is that is that acceptable? Oh, we, we've taken, we, we went ahead and, and had these people um, vaccinated already. Okay, okay. Yeah, so they, they're uh, those that will be on this for uh, on this May 13th flight will have been fully vaccinated. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, how many total though uh, are stranded here on Guam? Last I read, it was like 297. Um, we may have a little more than that. Uh, uh, unfortunately, not everybody has been able to register at the office. Uh, we, we've you know we've been keeping our our records ever since the beginning of the lockdown and. But there has been some that, you know, just came right after, like last month, two months ago, trying to, you know, getting here, trying to get home when, when the when the border opens, right? Uh, so it, it, and we're looking at possibly maybe 350 right now, uh, including those that just recently, you know, were arriving to Guam waiting for, for the borders to open. And uh, I don't know if you want to uh, uh, class, uh, you know, categorize those as, as, as stranded or just waiting to get on a flight once it opens. How soon after the May 13th flight do you anticipate the next flight? And then when you said that the other states in the FSM aren't quite ready for repatriation, what's the timeline on them mm -hmm. uh, being able to stand up their own repatriation flights? Okay. Right now, uh, the official word is uh, Koshrai is ready to bring back their stranded in, uh, in uh, uh, not uh, COVID-free uh, Republic of the Marshall Islands. Uh, and I heard that they're saying that as soon as um, I guess they're using school facilities to to do their um, on island quarantine. So as soon as schools out, they're able to do that. Um, Yap is in a similar situation there. They can bring back the their stranded in Palau, which is still COVID free. Uh, Chuk on the is what I'm hearing is not quite ready as far as facilities. But you know their the plans are already underway to to um, to work on those to rectify those so that you know because people have been it's been over a year um, mm -hmm. you know we definitely understand the the hardship and the uh, you know that people are are facing um, not being able to get home um, as far as what's going to happen after May 13th uh, after the May 13th flight to Pompeii it's really based on how this one goes. And and uh, because, it, like I said, there's a lot of people that are uh, waiting to go home. So after that, what there's no um, 
plans right now as to when exactly um, after the 13th, but, you know, definitely, definitely um, something is still cooking in the oven because it's, you know, it needs to to get done. Mm -hmm. Do you have a breakdown uh, of um, how many people are from, you know, uh, uh, Chuuk that are are stranded here, how many are from Pompeii and and the other islands? Um, Not I don't have the exact numbers with me right now as okay. far as our records at the office, though. But you know, the majority are from Chuk, Pompeii, uh, Yap, and 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 um, and Kosrai, Just about mm-hmm. a handful. Yeah, there was something that one one of the uh, uh, guests said last week, and it kind of was really mm-hmm. you know kind of sad. But she was mentioning how since they've been stranded for like a year, they only got was it one like one um check or or for financial yeah, assistance yeah there's an assistance are, yeah is that is that true or is there no other kind of there uh, has been there has been two, oh, two. um um financial assistance mm. um uh, provided to stranded citizens since the lockdown mm-hmm. um the those that are employed in the FSM are still collect are collecting their unemployment. Uh, the those that are um, um, we're calling them the med- the the medically stranded, they're collecting uh, uh, per diems on a daily basis from their um, oh. uh, healthcare program. Uh, so the government has been uh, providing assistance as much as possible. Uh, throughout this, or you know, this this pandemic, mm-hmm. where where are they being pre quarantined? The forty. Uh, like- yes, right now we're uh, uh, looking at several, a, a couple of hotels uh, here in Guam, um, Hotel um, Santa Fe and Grand Plaza. Mm-hmm. We haven't finalized a deal with them yet, with them yet. And uh, let's see, when when would they need to be quarantined if the flight is on? Oh, okay, so in May. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Nadine, what are you hearing on the repatriation uh, front? Um, I think what I can speak to is just knowing a lot of people who are just really anxious to to go back home. And so getting the opportunity to go get vaccinated when it's available, um, encouraging other family members, you know, it's just all playing, coming together to help with this fight against the COVID, uh, you know, on the island. But definitely, everyone is very anxious. And was on a daily. It's, that's 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 a hot topic right. with the, all the relatives and and church members. Yeah. Uh, let, let's talk about uh, when the vaccinations first rolled out. There was uh, someone I don't know if it was public health or it might have been Teresa who was talking about. Um, not a lot of people in the FSM community wanted to come out and get the shot, but it kind of seems with the outreach you guys have been having. Have we turned the corner on that? And now that we're talking repatriation and vaccination as part of that, yeah. are we seeing more people who are like, oh, I want to take it now? Yeah, that's yeah. definitely a big De- factor. Definitely, Chris. Oh, and that's why I, I asked Kanerian to come on today so that she can um, uh, share the, the you know, the 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 numbers for the, 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 the recent uh, vaccination clinics that we've been having um she's one of the you know the the person working very uh, from the, the association that's working very closely with the the grmc amc and public health uh, along with several others that have been very instrumental in in um you know in this uh, vaccination effort um we definitely have turned uh, a corner on that the uh, you know i think back in when we last talked what was it netting about five percent that's what public health was uh, was saying and now we're at what? Over 11% just within the past very, like, few weeks. Yeah. yeah. Um, definitely a double our efforts uh, because I think even before we had our first outreach at over at GRMC, it was about 3%. I just know they was such a small number. And so since we um, uh, collaborated and, and, and 
added more people to this uh, endeavor. We've just increased so much more. We've expanded even our roles um, in, in, in facilitating these uh, vaccination clinics. Um, it's just been such a learning experience for all of us. Um, you know, kudos to our partners and col uh, collaborators and our community advocates and, and volunteers from different parts of the island just coming together to help. Uh, something I've been sh um, expressing a lot to, to, to family members and, and friends is like, I remember at the beginning where that we were tr we were still at this uh, uh, place of getting people to, um, you know, understand why they need it or, you know, why they, you know, need to come get vaccinated. Now it's it's a little different. They're asking, where when is it? Where is the next one? You know, so it's definitely changed the attitude um, toward the vaccine. So that's a good progress, I, I think, to for us. What were uh, people saying, uh, Nadine, about why maybe they didn't want to take the vaccine? Was it just maybe they didn't know that it was available or that I, I heard some people thought it cost something. But what were they saying? Yep. I, I've heard that. And I was also surprised that people when I, we were doing outreach for um, um, registration that they thought there was a cost. Um, there's there's this kind of like public perception that a lot of the people are hesitant because they don't trust. There is a little bit of that, mm. but something that I've been kind of, um, me and my team have been kind of rethinking the way we look at the pandemic is, what is it that's missing for these people to access them? And are there are there enough ways for them to act to know what's going on and to actually um, be able to to reach it? And and that's what we've been doing. Um, but definitely a mix. Uh, there there is a little hesitation because there's a lot of public misinformation being shared on social media. Mm. But then to put into perspective, uh, this mistrust in the in the whole pandemic or the vaccine come, mm. is across the board yeah, and not just yeah. exclusive to FSM. And I think we've been trying to um, put that into perspective as we move forward, that there's other things involved and we need to think of long-term goals uh, with regard to health as we're working with these people. And and since March or since February, our first outreach, you know, we got we were shooting for 200. We got 106 people that came, you know showed up. Um, the next one we were we got 158, and then our third outreach we got um, 267. So it's wow. just and and having the people um, that that they're familiar with or they trust being part of the uh, the strategy or the planning and actually on site makes a whole difference. When we did an outreach at the church. We heard comments like, oh, we're so glad there's someone we know who's who can help us register. And and then we also um, through a partner, uh, you know, a good relationship with Dr. Dolores Lee. She was present with she came to church with us the one Sunday okay. to kind of be there as we were registering people. And as they you know gave had questions, we, you know, we referred her uh, them to her and we were there to interpret. So it it just really bodes really well and adds such a value that. Uh, all the different partners are just as committed and dedicated to helping our people trust in the system and the process and yeah, trust in the system and the process. Thank you. Oh, great job. Yeah. Uh, Teresa, I wanted to just follow up um, a little off topic, but something we definitely talked about the last couple of times you came on is when chief Ignacio had come out and said he was concerned about uh, the prevalence of uh, crystal methamphetamine in the FSM FAS communities and then he had mentioned that he was going to be working with the consulate. Uh, what's the status on that? Have we, uh, we'll just, I guess, what's going on with it? Yeah, we haven't um, um, had any recent meetings with uh, the chief of police. And, and you're absolutely right, um, Chris. It's becoming a prevalent problem here on Guam and not just within the FSM community, but, you know, uh, the whole community at large. And, and uh, you know, with this pandemic, we've kind of put all other activities and, you know, on the back burner. But we definitely, you know, within the association, uh, we're, we're, we're starting to have that conversation now. Um, we're looking at, we're, we're uh, planning to have some meetings on how to, you know, uh, tap into the, the programs that are, are, you know, that are in exis existence on Guam um, and, and see what we can do because we, we need to educate people that, you know, this is, this is pretty serious. Um, you know, we're seeing a uh, recent, um, uh, you know, crimes, uh, you know, uh, uh, on the rise 
because uh, of drug related activities. So definitely something that we need to look into and sooner than later. Thank you for that. Thank you. Nadine, thank you for coming on. Just wanted to say, though, hey, how about Nicole Yamase? Yeah, that was totally cool. <laughs> oh, yeah, awesome. <laughs> she's, yep. she's amazing. Yeah. We actually were in, we were in the same cohort together at the Young Pacific Leader wow. um, Conference. And so she was, um, there was, a, there, it was a majority South Pacific Islanders, right, from New Zealand, from from Australia and and Fiji and there was just a few of maybe like ten of us from North Pacific and so we definitely when we met in Fiji we just connected and it was like oh we're the Micronesian group in this uh, in this, uh, in this program so it was just great to see a, a good friend and definitely an inspiring young woman from Micronesia. I think it was um, just great to see a brown face at the bottom of the trench. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you, ladies. I want to get Thanks you back on because I want to see what other Zoom backgrounds you have. Yes. So, <laughs> we're super next week. <laughs> Especially as we get closer Chris, to thank the you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you, Nadine. There you go. Hey, you 953. Um, the show is probably brought to you by East West Rental, Cobble Enterprises, Carrier. IT&E and Jack in the Box, where there's never a bad time to enjoy Jack in the Box's newest $3 sauced and loaded curly fries with new slow-smoked bacon available in two flavors, 